Hi, I'm Tony Negri. I'm the Director of Product Management and Technical Services with Phillips 66 Lubricants. I want to thank you for joining us again, another in our series of videos of engine teardowns. Uh, if you've watched our videos in the past, you'll recall that we've done a lot of work with FA4 10W30s, mostly in Class 8 trucks and on highway service, uh, trying to prove out a worst case scenario with the FA4s and their lower high temperature, high shear, and the fears that the industry had as we moved into the new oil categories back in late 2016, early 2017. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand the messaging a little bit uh, and show you a little bit about the core technology that really drives our modern heavy duty engine oil product line. So in this case, what we have is a vehicle that's been using Gardol XT full synthetic 5W40 for its entire life. This is a 2015 Ram 1500 uh, eco diesel, no, three liter eco diesel. Uh, 270,000 miles. This vehicle was operated out of Phoenix, Arizona by a sales rep for one of our distributors. Uh, very conscientious about his maintenance. He was doing 10,000 mile drain intervals and he was hauling oil uh, to customers, uh, helping out, but it was his daily driver as well. So he accumulated a lot of miles. He paid a lot of attention to his maintenance. Uh, in just a second, we're going to bounce to Teddy Lazarus. He's our tech coordinator for heavy duty engine oils. And Teddy's going to walk us through the details of what we saw after we tore, tore down the engine and did all the parts rating exercises. I think you're going to be impressed. Teddy, take it away. All right, we'll kick it off right here on the bottom end. We're going to start with the crankshaft, focusing mainly on the main journals, rod journals. Um, overall rating was trace to light wear. We don't feel any step or any deep scratches within the journals. Um, looking at the bearings, main bearings, these are what carry the load of the crankshaft in the block. We're looking at the upper bearing. Very little wear, just enough to kind of take off that upper babbit layer. Same on the bottom. This is more of the load carrying. Um, minimal wear as well here. They, they, they look really, really good. Moving on, we're going to get into the rods. Um, mainly focusing on the wrist pin bushing. Uh, again, it's a common theme. Trace to light wear. Um, slight amount of wear just here in the lower portion, or I guess this would be the upper portion of the wrist pin. But it's also notable that the oil grooves are still very well defined and, and not a lot of wear in that area. Wrist pin is pretty much the same. You don't see any scratches, no debris tracking, slight discoloration, but not too bad. Uh, overall, uh, slight minimal, minimal wear. Nothing can be felt with the fingernail or nothing that really stands out. Moving on into the rod bearings. Uh, these are the upper. So you can see there is some discoloration on some of these, but that's mainly just from oil discoloration. It's just barely, a lot like the uh, main bearings, just barely starting to take that upper layer off of those bearings. So again, very minimal wear, look really, really good. Um, and of course, the, the uh, lower rod bearing, not as much load carrying here. These look phenomenal. All right, we're gonna move into the top end. Um, keeping in mind, this is a three liter eco or light duty diesel engine with 270,000 miles. So kind of unheard of. Um, when I talk about this, I, I believe this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. Um, a lot different wear regime occurs on the top end than it does in the lower end that we just talked about. You have a lot of mixed oil regimes in the top end. So you get a lot of boundary lubrication during startup and shutdown. So if you're gonna have wear, a lot of the time it's gonna show up here on the top end. So as we start over here on the heads, um, this is not really oil related, but just to kind of give you an idea of what kind of carbon buildup over 270,000 miles, um, very little, very little. If you rub the valve, it's more of a soot. It's not a carbon, so it wipes off really easy. The other head we have reversed, so you can kind of see the valves. Um, we did not disassemble these, but we wanted to focus on mainly the valve ends. That's where you're gonna see the majority of your wear. Um, but, and, that, and that's exactly what's presented here. There's very little wear on the ends of the valves where they make contact uh, with the uh, rocker arm. So 
Again, looks really, really good. Moving on into a camshaft. This has four cams, dual overhead cam setup. Um, again, as I was talking about that mixed oil regime, it really comes into play here on the cam lobes. There's a lot of rolling contact here. Um, again, there are no steps, no scratches, no pitting. It is absolutely pristine um, for this many hours or this many miles. Uh, moving on, we'll kind of look at the cross heads. These are a little harder to look at, but your rollers, again, there is no wear, no scratching, no debris that has went through, um, again, in pristine condition. As we move into the valve lash adjusters, uh, there too on the contact surfaces, hardly anywhere. Real quick, we'll touch on the oil pump. Um, this is phenomenal. This, this looks like it just come right out of the box. 270,000 miles and virtually no wear on the gears at all. No sludge buildup. It was virtually clean when it came apart. So another good indication of good dispersancy, good detergency, good wear protection. All right, we're gonna move on to the engine block and combustion chambers. Um, notably on the engine block, all of the cross hatch is still visible in all six cylinders. There's no carbon buildup at the turnaround points. Everything looks really clean. Top to bottom is where the piston travels. Really clean. Talking about the piston. Piston's overall rating um, was noted as having light to medium carbon buildup with some heavy carbon noted between the first and second ring landings. Uh, it's also notable that they did find some carbon down as low as the oil control ring. Looking at the bottom of the piston, you can clearly see that this is clean. Um, no deposits, no sludge, which speaks directly to the detergency and dispersancy of our oil. So um, again, very clean, looks really, really good. When we start talking about the rings, um, again, the first and second ring, no visible carbon buildup on the ring themselves. Ring faces, I would say, are about 80%, so still plenty of wear across the ring face. Okay, we'll finish up talking about the oil sump, valve covers, a little bit of the front engine cover. Mainly focusing on deposits or sludge buildup. Overall, very little sludge was noted, or very little deposits were noted. As you can see here in the oil sump itself, very light film. Very light film, hardly any there at all. Um, bottoms of the valve covers, again, are pristine, very clean. No buildup, no sludge at all. We had one, what small amount of sludge we could find was located right here behind the front cover, right on the back side of the high pressure fuel pump where there's very little oil flow. Just near the bearing, there's just a slight amount of sludge and that's all we could find. So overall, very clean. Thank you, Teddy. Those results are awesome. I really appreciate you walking through the parts analysis. If you operate a fleet and you want more information, please visit us at our website at goguardall.com or call our tech hotline at the number you see on the screen.